Okay. And I do want to say that I normally do not talk about the Mac, but because a lot of the Mac changes are the same as the iPad uh, 16 changes, I am going to show a few of those uh, to start with. Uh, and then I'll turn over to the watch. Then iOS 16, there's probably over 150 changes to iOS 16. Some of them are very, very small. Uh, others are larger. And then we'll uh, finalize by going to the iPad. And again, a lot of the iPad things that I'll show are also available on the uh, Mac OS. The, it, it's quite apparent that they're bringing these, this, the Mac OS and the iPad OS together slowly over time. And they're taking a pretty big step this year. Okay, so on the Mac, uh, this, the new system is called Ventura, and these are the Macs that'll be, uh, you'll be able to use Ventura on. I'm not going to spend much time on this. I know we're going to have a meeting on it next week, but you can look these Macs up on the website. Oops. Okay, let me, um, so this, this is one of the big cosmetic changes. To me, it's a very welcome change. This is the old systems preference that everybody's used to on the Mac. I never did like it. I never got used to it. Uh, I just, uh, but I, I know that there's probably a lot of Mac people out there that are gonna miss this, but this is what it's going to look like in the future. And it's not gonna be called preferences. It's gonna be called system settings. So when you go to the Apple in the upper left-hand corner, of your Mac, when you go to this new operating system, it'll say system settings. And when you hit that, this is what will come up. <clears throat> You'll still have the wheel at the, in the bottom menu uh, to get to it as well. This is the, I couldn't get it all on one page. So this is the first page. You can see here are the uh, items down here on the side. And then the second page, shows a continuation of those items here. So again, for me, that's a welcome change and it's, and it's uh, the same type of setup, uh, albeit there are different items on the Mac and the iPad, or on the uh, iPhone and the, uh, and the iPad. So that's a big cosmetic change that I really like. Okay, then you, you're going to also get two new uh, apps applications on the uh, on the Mac. One is the weather application, which is shown right here. <clears throat> now, I'm sure a lot of you know that Apple acquired Dark Sky a year or so ago, and Dark Sky, the app, is going to disappear. I think sometime this year, but they've taken a lot of the technology from Dark Sky and enhanced their weather app. And it, it really is uh, quite good. And incidentally, I'm, I currently am operating on all of the uh, beta programs that I have been from day one. I wouldn't recommend that to anyone unless you know what you're doing and uh, you can tolerate dealing with bugs because it is a little buggy. They will have a public beta available for anybody who wants to get on it. Probably the second week of July is when that'll come out. And then the finals will come out in September. Okay, so this is the weather. I got them highlighted in the menu what they'll look like. This is the clock, which is next. So this is identical to what's on the iPad and on the watch. You can see up here at the top, they have the clock and the different times and the alarm and so on. Okay, moving on. One of the big items that they're uh, putting up this year is called Stage Manager. And the way you get the Stage Manager on the Mac is in the menu bar, you'll see this funny looking thing here. When you tap on that, this comes up, you hit it and that activates Stage Manager. And stage manager, basically it's, it's identical 
This is identical on the iPad. Stage Manager allows you to have a uh, your, the main page you're working on right here. And then over here, uh, another four different pages that are open. And uh, so if you go over here and hit on uh, the world clock, uh, it would come up and this one would go over there. So it'll be a really easy way for people to navigate around. Of, call, of course, there are other ways on the Mac uh, to do that. There are several different ways, but on the iPad, there aren't that many ways. And this is, I think, going to be a good addition and people will like it. Um, and you don't have to use it if you don't want to. So I'll, more on this when I get to the iPad at the end. Now, one of the nice things that they're going to, that they've added is continuity camera, which is going to allow you to mount your camera on any Mac and use the sophisticated high resolution camera that hopefully your uh, latest phones have. And what you'll be able to use that camera in Zoom and in um, FaceTime calls and any other thing that requires a camera from the from the uh, computer. And it will be set up automatically when you connect it. And this is a rendition of the adapter that they're working on with Belcon. Uh, that's who they're working on to develop this. It's not available yet. It's not working in beta. Uh, but it'll look something like this, and uh, I'm sure that ultimately there might be knockoffs at in Amazon. I don't know because I don't know what technology is built going to be built into this little thing. Okay, now moving on, I want to touch on mail, and this is the same across all devices: the iPhone, the iPad, and uh, the Mac. You'll be able to schedule mail. You can remind yourself to follow up on a message that you've sent, and you'll be able to undo messages that you've sent. Now, unfortunately, you only have 10 seconds to undo. So you got to be on your feet uh, and on your game to make this change. Um, I, I, I would hope that they could make that longer, but I think it's short because of. Uh, of technology right now, because I it, it, we'll get into text and in text, you can go in and edit and recall messages and they give you 15 uh, minutes to do that. But in mail, for some reason, it's 10 seconds, which isn't very long. Okay, so I wanna go on and now turn to the watch. So basically, if you have watch three or below, you're out of luck for iOS 9 and it's time to get a new watch. Uh, also, some of the watch features will, enhanced features will only work on the six and seven and who knows what uh, they'll announce for the series eight, but I'm sure that there'll be some things on the series eight watch that won't work on the six and seven. Uh, there's, there's a lot of rumors of a lot of new health uh, features, but they're just rumors. Okay, so you get several new watch faces. Uh, the one of the most popular in all the blogs that I've gone over is this one. Uh, it's the astronomical watch face, and there's several renditions of this. You can have a small earth, a big earth, you can put in your location so that the earth will be showing that part of the earth where you are located. Uh, you can also uh, have the moon and a close shot of the moon far away. You can also have our solar system. So there are several options for this particular face. And then this is one for kids and I'm not gonna go over these others, but there are newer ones. Okay, now one of the things that I, I really like this, uh, they really enhanced some of the workout apps, a lot of them. And uh, I really like this, uh, which shows your heart rate zones. <clears throat> and I'll point something out. 
uh, that uh, th this works, first of all, with running, it works with um, biking, it works with stair stepper, uh, rowing machine, most of those type things. For some reason, it does not work with walking or inside or out or uh, uh, some of the other gym things, but a, a lot of things it works with. I don't know how they chose those, but I wish it worked with everything because I know when I take my walks, sometimes I'm going fast, sometimes I'm going slow, and I'd like to know this zone data. But what I was gonna quickly point out is you can customize these zones. And obviously the automatic default must be for some 25 year old because zone three at 147 beats per minute, uh, that's my maximum heart rate for somebody who's 73, theoretical maximum. So you, I had to go in, there's an area where you can go in on the phone and you can adjust these to your age appropriate um, levels. But I've been using it on the watch app and I just really like to know which zone I'm in. And you can set up targets that'll it'll, it'll it'll tell you, uh, you, know, you can say, well, I wanna be in zone three and it'll tell you if you get out of zone three and so on. I haven't gotten into that yet myself, but uh, you can set up those things. And then there's elevation things and uh, things for when you're swimming and uh, and running. So a lot of enhancements to the workout app. Here again is that zone thing, what it looks like. And what happens is when you go from zone one to two, it expands and becomes big. So if I go, uh, if I go back, you'll see this guy's in zone three and that's real wide right there. That's what happens. So that's a pretty nice feature. Okay, then moving on, they have a mirroring uh, function that is a real welcome feature where you'll be able to mirror your, your watch on the phone and you'll be able to control your watch actions from the phone. This is actually uh, dubbed more uh, of a, as a uh, accessibility feature than a mirroring feature. I mean, they, it is mirroring, but when you get down here and look at this, uh, you can, it, it's for people uh, with physical and motor disability uh, controls um, with their watch. Uh, and so they can control it on a bigger screen uh, on the iPhone with voice commands, sound actions, hand tracking, and similar technologies. And this, and this again is one that's gonna be available for a watch six and above. Okay, let me go on. Better sleep apps. I haven't gotten into this. I use the sleep app just about every night, but um, uh, I haven't gotten too much into the beta uh, features, new features, but there are enhancements to the sleep app area. Also, if you suffer from AFib, and I know with our membership, there have to be uh, people out there that are unfortunately afflicted with AFib. And if you are one of those people and you have an Apple Watch, they've enhanced the tracking of AFib activity so that you can better track it and you can uh, uh, pass that info information along to your physician. So fortunately, I don't have that problem yet, so I haven't tested that out. <laughs> um, okay, and moving on. Okay, uh, the iOS 16, here are the compatible models. And basically, if you have an, or, uh, if you have an iPhone, uh, seven or six, you're out of luck. You're not going to get iOS 16. And again, I don't know if all of the new enhanced features are going to work on some of these older models. Uh, they haven't been very clear on that, but I know if you have the newer models, that there certainly 
the, all these features are gonna, going to work. And, and again, this is a monstrous change in the, in the whole uh, phone. And it, it, there are some really, really neat features and I'll go over some of those, starting with the lock screen. This is the new lock screen. This is how I have mine set up right now. Um, I circled the date and the uh, time. And the reason I circled the date and the time is unfortunately, that's all you get on the iPad and you can't change any of it. So uh, that's unfortunate that they didn't carry some of these changes on the home screen or the lock screen over to the iPad, but they didn't. The only thing you get is this right here. So what you do get is you can change all these fields and I'm gonna show that. You can change the date and time, you can change the time, how it looks. You can change these widgets. You can have up to two bigger ones or four smaller ones. The selection isn't very good yet. I'm hoping that improves. Uh, also, you still get the flashlight, you still get the camera access, and you get notifications down here. <laughs> and you can have those showing uh, about three different ways. This is the condensed way, and if you touch on it, then they open up, and I'll show that. And you set up that in, in settings on how you want it to appear down there. Um, and the way you maintenance this whole area is you hard press in the middle, and then you can choose, uh, you can choose photos, you can choose probably 20 or 20 or 30 different scenes that they've already set up. And so uh, this is just the one that I selected. Okay. So when you hard press on the, on the middle uh, and go up to the, the time area, these are your choices. It's very limited. You have these uh, six choices on how it's gonna look. No change in size. That's, this is the, what you see is what you get. Um, but you can change the color down here at the bottom, okay? Oops, let me get back in here. Okay. Now, um, to change the widgets, again, you're hard pressing in the middle, this pops up. Uh, if you want to add a widget, you have to remove one of these two. And you can add, again, they have uh, the bigger widgets or smaller. You can add four smaller ones. Now, I'm hoping they change this because one guy that I looked at his videos uh, showed the battery percentage on the phone, but that is not an option right now. It has battery here, but the only battery that comes up is for the watch. So I think that's a software glitch and hopefully that changes because if I could have the... Um, percent show for my uh, phone, I would have that here. I'd probably change one of these to a double and maybe even have four across here. But these are the choices. This goes down and does show more below here, but they're, they're not that extensive. But nevertheless, uh, I use this a lot. I'm, I'm, a lot of people in the reviews rave about this new lock screen, and uh, I can see why, because I look at it quite often. Okay, I mentioned you can change the top up here. So again, here's how you change that. Here's your selections. If you don't like the, the date, you can put in the, the uh, sun event. You can put in your calendar activity and so on. So a lot of things you can do on this, on this uh, lock screen. And then also if you're playing music or you're watching a, um, a YouTube or video, whatever, it will show in this area on your lock screen. Here it shows that in 
the master bedroom. I have an AirPod uh, that is on playing Frank Sinatra. If I want to, I can uh, change the volume right here. I can go to the next song right here. I can turn it off right here. So that's also a very nice addition. Okay, now I mentioned, let me go back. I mentioned I have one notification. So if I want to see what that notification is, I just touch on it. And then this comes up and says, here's the notification. Okay, if you have several, several of them will come up. So again, I think this is a great new feature. Okay, in the control center, there's one additional item that has been added that you can add from the control center menu on your phone. And it is um, right there at the bottom and it is to do a quick note. So, you know, on the iPad, you swipe up from the uh, bottom right corner and you can do a quick note. This is the way you'll be able to do a quick note on the iPhone. Okay. Now, also in privacy and security, and this is a pretty neat setting, they have a safety check area now. And when you, I didn't, I could have gone into a great amount of detail uh, with this, but just didn't think I was going to have time. But when you go into here, it will show you everyone that you're sharing data with. Uh, so if I'm sharing pictures with Sheeta or if I'm <clears throat> allowing her to have uh, access to my location, uh, it would show that right there and I could turn it off. I could, I could maintenance it right there. Uh, also shows all the apps where you're allowing access to your phone or to your um, uh, photos or to your camera. And you can uh, turn those off by app. And, and so it, this is a really neat feature because it's all in one area and it's easy to go in and, and check these things out. And I was surprised that I was, I was sharing some, I had shared some notes with some people a couple of years ago, like they wanted a, a recipe I had and I sent them the recipe. And it was in there that I was sharing a note with them when I looked at what it was, it was the recipe I, I sent them uh, and uh, it was, I just went ahead and deleted it because they already had it. Uh, so that is a nice new uh, feature. Also, and a lot of people have wanted this in their reviews, this was talked about. Uh, I it didn't bother me, but uh, you can get now, you can set up keyboard feedback on the phone. And you can get two types, sound or haptic. And uh, so I turned on the haptic. Unfortunately, you can't change the degree of haptic uh, movement or haptic, the feel of the haptic, uh, like you can on the watch. You can't, there, there's no adjustments. It's one fits all and it's not very much. Uh, so when you're typing, uh, you, you get this haptic feedback or you can get, or you can do uh, sound. Okay, now let's go to text and everybody is just so excited about this because in text, uh, I, I sent this text, hello. Now, if I hold down on hello, this menu comes up and I can unsend it for up to 15 minutes. I can pull it back. I can edit it. And if I edit it and say, hello, how are you, George? Um, and then when I send that, when George would get that, it would say, hello, how are you, George? And it would say underneath, edit it. So he would know that I edited that comment. Um, 
I don't know why that's so important, but he would know that I edited that comment and it would say edited right here underneath the hello area. Um, now, unfortunately, this only works if you have iOS 16. So if I go in here and send George, I don't think George is on iOS 16, uh, but if he's on iOS 15, which most people are, are on, most sensible people, except people like me who like to be out there in the woods with snakes, uh, then it would say edited. It would look like he got hello, George, edited, but he would only get the hello. He would not get it because he doesn't have iOS 16. Same thing if I re recalled it. If I uh, if I did undo send, it would undo it on my end, but not on his. So this is not going to work well until a lot of people adapt to iOS 16. And fortunately, Apple has a very high adaption rate. So probably by December or so, most people you're texting to uh, will, will have iOS 16 up and going and you'll be able to use these features with confidence. Okay. Now, the other thing that they have done in the text area is um, you can mark a message as unread. So if you send a message and say, oh, I wanna get back to that later, you can mark it as unread. And I'll show that in a second. And you can also retrieve recently deleted text and that's a great addition because uh, if you delete a text now, uh, it's, oh my God, I better run to iMazing and restore or do something else. I don't know what else. But um, they put this in. So up, I, I read, a, I did a review today. It said up to 30 days, but, but on the next slide, it says basically up to 40 days. So I don't know what it's going to be, 30 or 40 days, but uh, 30 days is more than sufficient to recall a deleted text that you might have uh, deleted by accident. So here would be what that, uh, what that recently deleted is. And here's where this may take, uh, this may be available for up to 40 days. Uh, and it shows the number of days remaining. So you would just click on it and you would just recover it. Okay, then here is the mark as unread. So you would go over to the left uh, and, and swipe right, and uh, this would come up over on the left-hand side and you would just mark it and then it would be as though you had not read this text. So those are, I think those are really good additions to the text area. There are other enhancements as well, but these are the two biggies that everybody is really cheering. Okay, one of the other things, and this is, this is like magical. And at the end, if I have time, I'll connect my phone. I think I will have time and I'll actually do a live demo on this, but you can actually go to any photo and you can hard press on the image. This happens to be me out there biking and taking a break by the beach. And I can just lift that image right off, which I did. And while I'm holding that down with my other finger, I open up another app. And in this case, what I did is open up notes and I just drop it in. And that's pretty magical to be able to do that. Um, so, uh, that has gotten rave reviews so far, and it seems to work well in the beta. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is email. So, email on the phone. You now have four new options. Uh, if you hard press on the button to send the email, that's why I marked it up here in yellow. 
you get a drop down menu that says send now, send at nine o'clock tonight, send at nine tomorrow, um, 9 p.m. tomorrow, or send later. If you hit send later, a calendar comes up, you pick the date and you pick the time, and that email will be scheduled to go out. Uh, I actually did one of these and uh, I decided I didn't want to send it or I wanted to make a change. And so it appears in your unsent, I believe it appeared in my unsent items. Uh, I don't know, I did it a week or so ago. I think that's what it was, but I was able to pull it up and, and just change what I needed to change and then go ahead and send it. So this is a, this is a nice addition to mail. And again, this is available across the board. It's available on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, and, and so are all the text things, the text changes that I went over. Those are available across the board, and the same with the photo. I think the photo you can do on the Mac as well. Uh, I didn't try it out on the uh, Mac, but I know on the iPad and the iPhone you can lift those photos right off. Uh, so this is available on all iOS devices and on uh, Ventura. Okay, now one other change they made, I, I don't care for this, and it comes by default like this, at least right now in the beta, is uh, search is right down at the bottom of the page. Now, this is what it, this is what it is. This is what it is today. You get the dots, okay? And if you want to search, you just go to the middle of the page and pull down and search, which is what I do all the time. And that's what I like to do. So I don't like this new feature. Uh, the new feature, search is on by default. And if you want those dots, you have to hold down and move your hand, and then you can move from page to page. If you want to search, you just touch on that and uh, the search comes up. Uh, if you touch a little bit too hard, everything starts squiggling. So you, if you get the dots back, you just, you have to move to the side. Uh, now, fortunately, if you don't like that, and I, and you can still, and you can, even with this on, you can still go to the middle of the page and pull down and the search area will appear. Now, fortunately, you can turn that off in settings on the home screen. Here it's on and I turned it off. And when you turn it off, you get what you have, what everybody has today on iOS 15. Okay. So let me move on. So, and then here's what the search bar looks like. The search has been enhanced significantly. There's a lot of more detail that they provide now. I don't show it here, but uh, they're, there are a lot more things that come up in search than used to. Okay, now in photos, there have been a couple of significant changes that when you go to, the, to your albums area and you go all the way to the bottom of the page, you now have duplicates, you have hidden and hidden, a, is locked and you have recently deleted which was always there but now you can have that locked as well and your face id will undo these uh, uh, if, it, if it's your device um but i was amazed that i'm always trying to delete duplicate photos to have so many uh photos in my library uh, as you can see here, and that's probably small. I know a lot of people have 40 or 50,000. Uh, but um, I was amazed that I had like, on my iPhone, I had a couple hundred duplicate photos. And on my iPad, I had some, and I had some on the Mac. And uh, they were, they were, interestingly enough, they were different duplicates on different devices. I don't quite understand that with everything being on iCloud, but that's the case. Uh, so I cleared them all out. I looked at them. I'll show you how to do that in a second. 
And I just, with one swipe, you can just clear out all those duplicates. And, and when you clear them out, the system keeps the duplicate that is the highest quality, which is nice as well. So let me go to that. Um, okay, so here are seven duplicates that I have. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, seven. And if I wanted to merge these separately, I just hit the merge button. Or if you want to select, you can go up here and hit select and you can select all and do them all in one swipe. I actually had to go in and create these duplicates because, as I said, I cleared all of mine out and I wanted to be able to show this in my presentation. Okay. Then let me get over to the hidden. So I have one person that's hidden here. It's not an old girlfriend. It happens to be my cousin, her graduation picture from probably 60 years ago. Um, and when you check the person, any person you've hidden, this pop-up menu appears. And then there's an area here to unhide. If I hit unhide, it, it would be unhidden. So that's a nice deal as well. Okay, this is really spectacular and I hope that you guys are all gonna copy this down. This is my dummy contact that I set up for purposes of uh, doing these presentations. Um, so none of the things here you have to worry about is being real data. Uh, John Doe is a fictitious person who I just created the other day. Um, so with that in mind, here's the, the reason I did that is because now when you share a contact, you can decide what information you want to share, which is a great addition. So when you sh hit share contact, this comes up. Okay. And you hit this to show the fields you're going to share. And of course, down here, you do whether you're going to do it with messaging or with mail or save it to a file or what have you. But when you hit this field right here, you get this option. Here's John Doe. <clears throat> and I said, okay, I don't wanna show John Doe's company. That's, that's not anything I wanna show. And I don't wanna show his birthday. So when I share his contact to whoever I selected uh, on the previous page, then they will only get his name, telephone number, email, and address. And that's pretty slick. Okay, so now moving on. They made uh, some tremendous uh, strides forward in uh, allowing individuals to set up medications and to track their medications and to remind them when to schedule med medications and, and so on. Uh, I haven't set any of these up. I was gonna set one up the other day and uh, I, I did not, but, um, and I don't know if I'm gonna use this. I've, Mine are pretty simple. You take these pills in the morning and take these at night. But uh, uh, for a lot of people, they're supposed to take one at eight in the morning, one at 12, one at three in the afternoon. This is going to be great for somebody who has that kind of a schedule. <clears throat> They'll be able to put it right in here. And uh, if they have a watch, it'll also show on the watch. So it shows the name of the medication. You can take a picture of the pill, what it looks like. And um, so you set up, you can set up a schedule of when to take it. And then when you set up that schedule, so here, here's several of them here. 
you set up a schedule of when to take these things. Okay. And then voila, time sensitive notification. Check your medications you need to take at eight o'clock PM. Okay. So that's, I think, going to be pretty neat for a lot of people. And then when you would check this, of course, this would pop up in your notification area as to what you're supposed to be taking. Um, again, on this screen, this shows again a different, a different uh, lock screen uh, background wallpaper that's that they've that they're using. Shows a different view of of that clock area. Some different. Um, uh, widgets that that are on this page. So again, another indication of that. Now, let me go into the iPad. So uh, the iPad is compatible with these devices, basically fifth generation mini, fifth generation uh, iPad, and later and third generation. Uh, iPad Air and later, and then all iPad Pros. Okay. Now, I had mentioned, this is my lovely wife. Uh, I had mentioned that this is the lock screen on the iPad. You, you don't get any of these, you don't get any of the uh, <laughs> widgets. You don't get any of the notification stuff down here. You don't, of course, you don't get a flashlight. You don't get the camera access. All you get is the date and the time, and you cannot change the date and the time. So it's very limited. I'm very disappointed that they didn't carry over that home screen technology on the phone to the iPad. But they didn't. Okay, so the big, big thing on the iPad, uh, again, is this stage manager. I mentioned that this is identical on the, um, the uh, Ventura, uh, Ventura on the uh, Mac OS. So uh, this, th this is gonna be really neat for the iPad. And so again, you would set this up. Uh, it's set up a little differently. I'll show you where it's set up, but it looks identical. And here they have actually two windows set up on this uh, that they're looking at right here. But if they close these, then they would go to one of these over here. They could go to one of these over here and this one, these two would move over stacked on each other. So that's pretty, pretty neat. Now, one more thing, uh, you can resize these and, and you can stop overlaps and so on. Um, this feature is only available on, on the iPad Pro models with the M1 chip. Now, a lot of people are disappointed in that and Apple's uh, explanation for that, which I believe to be true is that the technology to do this requires that the, the super power of that M1 chip, they're saying if they would use a lesser chip, the user would not experience the same quality of stage manager functionality. Uh, a couple people in some reviews said, well, maybe they could do a reduced version of it or something, but I don't think they're planning on it. I think the other thing is they want to distinguish that pro uh, uh, iPad from the rest of the line, which I think strategically makes sense. Okay. So I mentioned this is the way you turn it on is in the control center. There is a new um, item. This is what it looks like uh, with a screen and then the other screens on the side over here. 
you press on that and when you press on that this comes up and you think well wait a minute it's not working and this is the same on the on the mac when you first open it up this is what you get and until you open a website you don't see the stuff on the left so in this case i believe i opened up cnbc on the next slide yes cnbc and um you can see here are the other four photos and youtube facebook and mail so if i if i take and hit all i need to do is hit on photos it'll pop up to where i left off and this one will cnbc will go over here and replace it that's pretty pretty neat uh feature on the ipad um and uh i think a lot of people that's gotten rave reviews and and i think i don't know how much i'm going to use it but i think it's going to be a great feature um okay okay there's also external display support which is more than mirroring it's it's truly going to be external display support where your ipad uh will will go will be right on the on the uh on your mac and uh it'll be identical and you'll be able to do things on the mac and it'll show on your ipad and so on and so forth and this is um uh viewed as a great addition as well and with that this is a picture of the tetons <laughs> and we have managed to get through all those 57 slides in record time so at this time i can take questions and i can also do some live demos on the phone if somebody wants to see some of this stuff or on the um, ipad go ahead you have time go ahead and do the live demos that you wanted to do okay um so let me go into uh let me go into um gee i don't know which ones i want to do well let's let's go into text and i'll do a text to uh, my wife and i'll say uh hello and i'll send that and then i'll press on this and when i press on this Here's that menu that comes up that I talked about. Okay. And I'll hit edit and I'll put uh, how are you? Okay. And now I'll I'll send that. Now it says delivered edited. Now she all she got was hello because she's on iOS 15. Okay. Um, and she did not get the edited portion because she doesn't have 16, which I explained before. Now, if I hold on this again and I say, oh, I want to retract that, I'll, I'll go down here to undo set and it disappears. Unfortunately, it doesn't. The hello is still sitting on her machine because um, uh, because she doesn't have iOS 16. But that's how that works, and that's pretty that's pretty slick. <clears throat> then, any questions on that? Uh, no, uh, it, but it did say that directly above the message. It uh, had a little blurb that uh, if they were on an older system the unsend may not be available on the other person's um, system, right? Yes, that, I, it, it actually said that when I sent it? Yes, right okay. above the text, did, yeah. Okay, I didn't notice that, but uh, that's good, good to know. So, mm -hmm. okay, so let's go to a message and I'll send a message to, uh, to to myself.
and I'll just put in, um, okay. Having fun. Okay, now I'm gonna go up here and hard press on this arrow. If I just touch it, it'll send it. If I hard press it, come on. It didn't like that. So let me try that again. That might not be working yet because I, I did try that though the other day. Let me just, uh, Okay, let's just skip the subject and go. Got to put something here. There it is. I hard. I didn't hard press enough. Okay, so I can send now. Send at nine tonight. Send at nine uh, tomorrow. Send later. I'm going to hit on send later, and this is what comes up. Okay. So is it sitting in your out is it sitting in your outbox? Okay. So so we'll look at that. So we'll do um we'll send it uh later at um one o'clock one one thirty on today. Okay, now when I go into here <clears throat> And go into it's right there. Send later. Go back. Go back. Oops. Go back, Mitch. There's a send later category. And near the directly under back. mailbox. Go back to where it says mailboxes. Go two down below mailboxes at the top. Oh, yeah. Send top later. Of, yeah. yeah. Send yes. later. Yeah. I did use it the other day. I just didn't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there, okay. so there it is. So then I can go in here and I can pull this up and I can decide, oh, I want to edit this and I want to cancel. No, I want to edit it and I want to go to um, done. And it, I just set it now because I didn't change the time. I changed the time to right away. Okay. Okay. You okay? You have a request to show the duplicates and to show the pulling the image out of the picture to place it in another app. Okay, let's go to the duplicates and go to um, albums, 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 albums. Um, I don't know if it's here or not. No. Um, it was on, on the utilities. To go no, down, Mitch. Go, go back down. Go back to go, Mitch. Go back up. Yeah. Go back up. Yeah. Go back up. All right. Look on the left. You see utilities. Oh yes, 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 yes. So would that so be on your? This is right here. Yeah. Right. On the iPad, it would be under utilities. Yes, under the, on the iPhone, it's under at the bottom of albums. Mm -hmm. And so if I want to, that's a good point. So I'll go over here and, and hit select. And you see, I can select all, okay, which I'll, I'll, I'll do. I want to get rid of these. And then merge seven at the bottom, okay? So merge seven, merge. Gone. Now, let me go under the hidden. And you see there's there's no menu, but as soon as I go to select and select her, uh, a menu should be appearing here. It must be a software bug because it's not appearing. Oh, uh, no, here it is. No, it's not there. I didn't see it. What are you looking for? Oh, yeah, no, unhide. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Right there, unhide. So I'd unhide that. So is there a password that you can set? Because it says it's locked, but if you just, it seems like you just clicked on it and it showed the hidden photo. So how do you really lock it? 
Face ID. Oh, okay. Face ID. Uh, now, there was talk in one video that you would be able to use a different type of a password if you wanted to, but uh, I have not... Um, I have not uh, seen that. <laughs> Here's the recently deleted, which is locked. Uh, and, and again, that opens it right up. But I didn't know this must not be working because it, when I selected her and brought up this menu and hit unhide, Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, this time it took. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and it would go so she would go right back into my library. Now, what okay. was the other question? Because I didn't get it. Uh, the one where you took yourself and an image and put it in notes. Oh, Can you do that? Yes, that is so magical. Let me show that. Uh, let me get into some favorites and I'm gonna get into um I'll do it with my uh, with my cute little dog. So I'm just going to hold him like this, okay? And then with my thumb, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to open up notes. And I hit a new note and I'm going to drop him right in. And you cool. could do that in mail, or you could, and you can also do it from a website. You can go to a website. I haven't tried that. Let me just see if I go to a website and go to, um, let's go to Amazon, see what I got in Amazon that I could grab. See right there? Grab those two. Go over here. Go to um, an email and go to a new email and put this in right down here and then go in and send it to somebody. So that, I mean, that they described it in the, in the keynote as magical and that is pretty damn magical. It is. In my, in my opinion. Next question. Uh, uh, Charles Anthony, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Hi, yes. Uh, when you took the selection of your dog and it was silhouetted, instead of dragging it to a note or an email, can you just drag it into create a new photo with a silhouetted photo? And then you could use that elsewhere whenever you need it? Well, yes, you, uh, I'm thinking about that. I think the only way to do that is to have, a, you have to drag it into, I think you could drag it into an existing photo as long as the photo was a blank screen. I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Um, let me, let me see. I've got, I can play with that for a second. So let me just grab him again. Okay, and let me go back here and go to go to this screen right here. No, it's not a it's not allowing that. Uh, no, it's not allowing that. But I'm sure that there would be some way to work. You know, you could always you could always take and put him on a blank. Um, See, it pasted him right in here again as a duplicate. Uh, you could always take and, and uh, uh, paste him onto a note or on whatever you're doing and take a screenshot of it and get it into a photo that way. And when you put him in another note or an email, can you then drag that, that into something else, right? It, once, once it's been silhouetted, it remains silhouetted. I'm assuming. Um, I guess the way to know if you I, took the email and had a background color to your email, you can see that. Yeah, let me let me just see what I'm doing here again. I'll try that real quick. So let's go to um, let's go to a note 
Oh, he's there already. So, okay. So let me just see. Yeah, I'm pull. No, uh, well, no. Share. It's saying copy the image, share, smaller image, delete. But it's not allowing me to pick that image up out of my notes. I'm surprised that it doesn't. Uh, let me look at a note that I know might have something in it. Like, let me go to a a cooking recipe where here. Let's see if it'll let me. It's letting me grab that photo out of a note. So I don't know why it wouldn't allow me to grab him out of the note. There's Interesting question. There's a lot of things going on because it masked out the background. And once you mask out the background, you have more things going on than you actually see. So that's possibly why it's not allowing you to pull that into something else. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, Michael Kowasniak, can you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Thanks, Sheeta. Hi, mm -hmm. Mitch. Um, I'm hey, really Mike. interested by um, this information about uh, merging, the, the merge function in photos. I've got lots and lots of duplicate images. I have no idea why, but I've got lots of duplicate images in photos. And I've not dared remove any because some of them are linked to photo books. And would you know if this merge function will maintain links to photo books as well as albums? I suspect the answer is yes, but do you know? I, that, I have not run across that question. It's a good question. I think what, what I would recommend that you do is select a photo that you know is in a photo book and try it out on one of those yes. when you try this <laughs> <Yes>. function out. <laughs> Yeah, good plan. And good I, plan. I'm Thank curious, you. are there, and maybe we can unmute mute, or we can get a show of hands or something. I'm, I'm curious, is, the, is anybody else out there on the beta software yet? If you are, please uh, put that in the chat or raise your hand. Uh, and, and maybe you. you can let me let me know, Sheeta, if, if you see anything. Uh, I know that Jeff Bohr is on and uh, it is buggy. I've had problems with it. But if I got time, I want to, do we have more questions? Yes, we do. Oh, okay, good. Okay, uh, Marsha Khan, can you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Uh, yes, in photos, I put my pictures into an album, but it still stays in the library. Is there any way that this new, um, update from Apple will be able to get rid of that photo in my library and just keep it in the album. No, not that I'm aware of. And that hasn't been brought up at all. Okay, can I explain that? Because Marsha, you're you're actually thinking about that incorrectly. Oh. An al an album is just a pointer. Okay. It's pointing to it's pointing to the photo that's in the library. So okay. if you, you, can, you can delete the album without deleting the images. But if you delete, my understanding, if you delete the image from the library, it's gone. Right, okay. So if, if someone else knows better, please correct me on that. But that is my understanding of how that works because I've made many, many albums. But if I delete the image, it goes away from the album as well. Yes, that's, that that's my understanding. That's my understanding, uh, Sheeta. Okay. And, but in my library, I have, let's say, four duplicates of a picture, and only one of them I can delete. It won't let me delete all, all of them. So I'm wondering if that duplicate uh, feature will work on that. Well, I, I had so many duplicates that I did not even know I had, and my library is pretty well cleaned up now, And uh, but I can't answer that question, but I can tell you, I was really surprised because I'd used some of those duplicate annihilator software and all that stuff, and um, I, I was amazed at how many I still had, mm -hmm. oh. and I was amazed that it was a different amount 
on my iPad and my iPhone and on my Mac. Yes, that's yeah. the same I'm, issue I'm having. Okay. Yeah. yeah so can... I think you'll have to wait till the fall or if you're so inclined, uh, the, 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 these betas will be available to the public about the middle of July. But be warned that a beta is a beta, and that means that there are snakes in the woods. Mm -hmm. Marsha, you also had a question when Mitch was showing uh, the medications. Yes. Um, I forgot the question. <laughs> okay. Uh, can, can you add that to the widgets? Yes, that's right. Thank you. Yes, uh, you, you can't add it to the widgets, but you but you can get notifications. I don't think it's on the widgets. Let me just let me just look real quick on my phone. Uh, Thank you, Chia. <laughs> you're welcome. Let's see, customers. Uh, can widgets no it's not an item i see on the widgets the widgets are really limited to um uh, to battery calendar clock fitness home news reminders stocks weather uh, but well, I, I, they, you can put them in notifications so that they'll appear at the bottom of the screen when it's time for you to take your medication oh okay so are, are widgets being limited? They are limited. Which? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Let me, let, me, let me share that. I want to get out of, I want to really take, uh, we've got a few more minutes, so let me get my phone going here. And okay, this is my home, my lock screen. And so if you're, I, I mentioned, I'm going to hard press in the middle. Oh, it's not going to let me do it while I'm on Zoom. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. No, yeah, okay. There it is. Hard press on the widgets. And this is all you get. That's that's the end of the widget. What happened that's to the it. widget library? Where, where's what happened to the widget library? Is it gone? The widget library on the on the home screen on the lock screen is is not there. Okay. The widget library you're speaking about was where was that at? Was that on the iPad or was that the widget library when you when you're on your uh, on your screens and then you uh, flip all the way to the when you go past the last oh, yeah. screen you you you, app, the, you have the app library that has all of those yeah okay those are still those are still there. Mm -hmm. uh let me just see those are still customized well i don't know if they're there or not i don't see uh oh there's the plus right there they're still there on the ipad but on the um on the phone, oops. We can't see anything here. moving on your, we can't see anything moving on your screen. It, uh, is your... Well, let me try it again. Now, is, yeah, your screen okay. just went black. There you go. Oh, okay. okay, so on the phone, no, it's not there because if you go to the, if what you're talking about is when you go on the iPad, go all the way over to the left-hand side and maybe it was there on the phone, Mm -hmm. begin with because i always get confused when i go to this new software but there's a on the on the ipad there's a plus up here mm -hmm. and all those widgets come up and on here when you hit on the widgets right here uh i just get out of it again let me just get back in yeah i have to when it doesn't like when I lock that screen. Um, okay, so when I hit on, when I hold, no, it's not even gonna allow me to get in there. It's, it's not liking Zoom. Okay, all um, right, then 
let's take one last question for you so you can clarify something for Frank. Frank, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah, uh, Mitch, what happens, let's say I have 20 duplicates of a, of a photo. What does merge mean? Does it mean, what does it do instead of like just selecting 19 and hit delete? Uh, it's it, according to the write-ups, it is taking the best photo out of those 19 duplicates and keeping it in your library and deleting the others. And they will show, they should show in the recently deleted folder. Okay, okay. thank you. All right. Okay. All right. And and with that, we probably have just 30 seconds left. So let's oh, let me uh, just okay. Can you see my screen right now? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, so this is um, um, well, I can't do this right now. I gotta let me just see if I can do this again real quick. Okay, if I hard if I hard press. It's not allowing me to do that, so I have to. No, I can't do it. But uh, this is another example of, of what you could change the home screen to. Mm -hmm. um, oh, here we go. Can you see that now? We can yep. see that. Okay. So here are all the ones you can that I could choose from. There's okay. a lot of them. Okay, and there's plus over here, and so um, I just wanted to show that real quick. Okay, thank and you. With that, I think we're finished, with, right? With that, we are finished. It is 1245. I want to thank you, Mitch.